Greetings from the great state of Texas and welcome everyone to my word of the week. Today I want to talk about Lord, you're holy. Isaiah chapter 6 verse 1 says, And the year that King Isaiah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Now it says here in the year that King Isaiah died, so who was Uzziah? Uzziah was one of the longest reigning kings of Judah, ruling for 52 years. Uzziah also led Israel in military victories over the Philistines and other neighboring nations, and he was a strong king. Uzziah was an energetic builder, planner, and a general. Second Chronicles chapter 26 and verse 8 says, of Uzziah, his fame spread as far as the entrance of Egypt, for he became exceedingly strong. Judah had just experienced revival through Uzziah's grandfather, Joash, but idolatry was still present. Scripture says that Uzziah obeyed the commandments of the Lord, but was full of arrogance. In his later years, he decided that he was worthy enough to offer incense and the holy temple, which was not lawful for anyone other than the Levites to do. The priests rebuked him for entering, but Uzziah did not listen. Therefore God smote him with leprosy for the rest of his life. 2 Kings chapter 15 and 2 Chronicles chapter 26. So to say in the year King Uzziah died is to say a lot. It is to say in the year a great and wise king died. But it is also to say in the year a great and wise king who had a tragic end died. And Isaiah had great reason to be discouraged and delusion at the, at the death of King Uzziah. Because a great king had passed away and because his life ended tragically. So where was the Lord in all of this? The Lord was sitting on a throne. God was still enthroned in heaven and was still in charge of all creation. Amen. Isaiah was a working priest and was in Solomon's temple. He was probably there to pray and worship and possibly reflecting on the death of the king who was his first cousin. And all of the sudden, the doors of the temple open, and he experiences the vision. It says, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lifted up. My friend, there is a throne in heaven, and the Lord God Almighty sits upon it, and is sovereign ruler of the universe, amen. And in this central fact of heaven, that there is an occupied throne in heaven. God does not sit on a chair in heaven. Anyone can sit on a chair, but sovereign kings sit on thrones, and our Lord God sits upon a throne as the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Amen. And Isaiah was not alone in seeing God's throne. Almost everyone in the Bible who had a vision of heaven and was taken to heaven or wrote about heaven spoke of God's throne. The prophet Micah saw God's throne in 1 Kings chapter 22. Job saw God's throne in Job chapter 26. David saw God's throne in Psalms chapter 9 and chapter 11. The sons of Korah saw God's throne. Ethan the Israelite saw God's throne in Lamentations chapter 5. Ezekiel saw God's throne in Ezekiel chapter 1 and chapter 10. And Daniel saw God's throne in Daniel chapter 7. And the apostle John saw God's throne in Revelations chapter 4. In fact, the book of Revelation may as well have been called the book of God's throne because God's throne is specifically mentioned more than 35 times 
in that book. Now the core belief of atheism or materialism is that there is no throne. There is no seat of authority or power that all the universe must answer to. And the core belief of humanism is that there is a throne, but man sits upon it. But the Bible makes it clear that there is a throne in heaven. And no fallen man sits on that throne, but the Lord God Almighty is enthroned in heaven. Amen. Isaiah may have been depressed or discouraged because a great leader of Judah was no longer on the throne. But God in heaven now shows Isaiah that he don't have to worry about it. Uzziah may not be on his throne, but I am on my throne. And it says high and lifted up. The throne was exalted and majestic. In that time, the throne set its occupant in a superior position. And then it says the train of his robe filled the temple. Kings of that time would wear robes with long trains because they were very difficult to maneuver and work in. Wearing a long train meant I am important enough that I don't have to work. I am a person of honor and dignity. Others must serve me and wait on me. Essentially the same is said when a bride wears a dress with a long train today. And my friend, God is so honored. He is so important and so dignified and holy that the train of his robe filled the temple. That's a long train because he is a thrice holy God. Amen. I like that song, You're Holy. It goes, I saw the Lord seated on his throne. He was clothed in glory, exalted high. And the train of his robe filled the temple. The angels circled around him and cried, You're holy. Oh, so holy. You're holy. You are holy, Lord of all. Woe is me, for I am unclean, for my eyes have seen the Holy King, and he cleansed my lips before I died. And the pillars shook as the angels cried. I saw the Lord seated on his throne. He was clothed in glory and exalted high, and the train of his robe filled the temple. The angels circled around him and cried, You are holy. You are oh so holy. Holy Lord of all. Amen. Now in this vision, Isaiah saw the Lord high and lifted up. And he hears the angels sing, Holy, holy, holy. And no doubt about it, Isaiah saw the pre-incarnate Christ, in great glory and holiness. But he is then made to see his own unworthiness, his own sin, and he repents. And soon as he's made aware of a lost and dying world and declares, here I am, send me. You see, Isaiah's life was forever changed when he saw the glory of the Lord. And my friend, that's what we need today. We need men and women of God seeking after the face of God to have a greater revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ, of who he is and what he came to this earth to do and did do and what he's accomplished through his death on that old rugged cross, his burial, his resurrection, and his ascension, the finished work of Christ, and to see him in all of his glory. Amen. Because when someone truly gets a revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ, it changes that person's life forever. So let me ask you this question. 
is the Lord Jesus Christ ruling and reigning upon the throne of your heart today? Is he the Lord of your life? Is he the rose of Sharon and the lily in your life? Is he your first love or have you left your first love? Are you seeking after him with all of your heart? Because when someone truly seeks after the Lord with all of their heart, my friend, then he will be found. And the Almighty God will open up the windows of heaven and his glory will shine forth into their heart and life of that individual. Is that your desire? Is that my desire? To have the glory of the Lord shine forth in our hearts and lives. And again, when that happens, it changes that person forever. So in the year that King Isaiah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. And my friend, just like Isaiah was discouraged, and delusioned about King Uzziah that day. We can also become discouraged and delusioned with the trials of life. And as we look around and we see the world that we live in today in such chaos, it can pull you down and discourage you both physically and spiritually. But in the uncertain times that we're living in today, we need to keep our eyes on Jesus and remember that he is still seated upon his throne and he sees all and is in control of all. So again, let me ask you this question. Is the Lord Jesus Christ ruling and reigning upon the throne of your heart today? Is he the Lord of your life? Is he the rose of Sharon? Is he the lily of your life? Is he your first love? Or have you left your first love? Are you seeking after him with all of your heart? Because when someone truly seeks after the Lord with all of their heart, my friend, then he will be found. And the Almighty God will open up the windows of heaven and his glory will shine forth into their heart and life of that individual. Is that your desire? Is that my desire? To have the glory of the Lord shine forth in our hearts and lives. And again, when that happens, it changes that person forever. Amen. So I just encourage you, my friend, to keep your eyes on Jesus and your faith anchored in him. Like the song goes, Lord, you are holy. Oh, so holy. You are holy, Lord of all. Amen. And that concludes this message on Lord, you are holy. God bless.